Hey, what's up, guys? Roland Wolf here. <clears throat> I was going to get into a trade uh, from last week, DPW, and it was pretty hectic. Um, I got caught in a halt and, and a drop. I tried dip buying way too many shares and averaged down and ended up having to eat about a 40K loss. Uh, but then I did dip buy right before close, quite a large position, and ended up recouping all those losses and some into the next morning. Um, I actually got some live footage of that trade as well, but it'll take a little bit, little bit of time to get that done. And I don't have too much today, so I'm going to get into a trade from today's trading. And I think there's some good, valuable lessons on it. It's an OTC, BTSC. And it was running this morning really hard uh, in sympathy with Bitcoin, which I think it's up around seventeen or eighteen hundred dollars right now, which is nuts. Anyways, we'll get into the trade for you. Here's here's the BTSC daily chart from today um, in the last six seven months. Um, you can see there it's had a couple spikes uh, and then has just been kind of kind of tranquil for a while, but it began ramping up and. Uh, couple weeks back it spiked really hard it, it made on it made a big run from eight cents to 64 cents um, went completely parabolic and that's before it pulled back and ended up dying out like these things do anyways I tried buying this this last Friday on this day thinking it would bounce here at this level uh, which is you know around 15 16 cents um, so I bought it then and I actually ended up cutting when it went looks like it, you know, it may be heading back down towards 11, 10, 9, 8. Uh, so it was a day early on the bounce, but today it actually gapped up. So it got my attention immediately that it held at the end of day Friday I actually held this pretty key level. Um, so I was kind of expecting a bounce this morning and that's what put this on my radar. Uh, we've got an immediate gap up actually and... You can see the gap up here. It opened, uh, closed at about 15, 16 cents on Friday and gapped up a, a couple cents, which in the case of a penny stock like this, that's like 10%, something like that. Um, let's see. Let me get to the, another chart. Here we go. So here's the one minute chart from this morning on BTSC. And like I said, we got the gap up uh, at a key level and there was some decent volume coming in. So I went ahead and took about 40,000 shares. Um, where is this? About a 19 cent average. Um, and I was risking actually the gap. So I was only risking about two cents and on 40,000 shares, that's actually not too much risk. Um, anyways, so we kept spiking. I didn't end up taking profits. Uh, I was watching a couple other stocks at the time and I was kind of looking for a bigger move than this, but when it didn't break my risk, I was fine staying in the trade. And then we got a couple higher lows, uh, ABCD of sorts here. Um, as soon as it broke the morning's high and held the morning's high right in this region here, 1015, 1020, uh, we've got a really good parabolic spike, uh, OTC style. And it ran from 21 cents all the way to 32 cents. Uh, so I was sitting pretty on this trade. Now, I didn't take any profits into this. Um, I did take some profits right here. Just I think I sold 10,000 shares. And that was just I saw something in the level two that I wasn't comfortable with. Uh, but it ended up being nothing and kept on spiking. Um, now, when it went from 26 to 30 in the span of three seconds, three, I'm sorry, three minutes, I did take some more off. Um, just locking in profits along the way. And that's how I managed to stay pretty patient and take, you know, the meat of these moves. Um, it's kind of my style of doing it, but I figure, you know, if I'm selling into each pop or in this case, obviously if it's an OTC, you kind of want to be a little bit ahead of everyone else when it comes to buying or selling uh, because it can be extremely difficult to get out of these things, um, as you'll see as we go along in this chart. So that's that's why I take profits. I don't want to th this this trade to turn against me and end up having to chase weakness to get out of this stock uh, when it finally does panic. And it was almost up 100% at this point. So let me see. Anyways, um, we get up here to the 32 cent region, and I ended up taking profits here 
um, basically because if you look at the daily chart, um, I was just basically, actually I was looking at the 60 minute chart, I'm sorry. So this level here, you can see it had some difficulty with over the span of four, four hours or so. Um, it was also support here prior, it was support here. And so I found this to be a pretty key level of 32, 33 cents. Um, that's kind of what tipped me off to where the turning point might be. Now, if we get back up to the minute chart, you'll see right around that stage, I took most of my profits. And it ended up being perfect because this thing ended up having quite a severe, you know, mid afternoon panic, um, late morning panic, I'd say. Uh, got rid of shares there. And then we had this beautiful panic back down to the 20s, the low 20s. And if you were watching the level two at the time, you know, there was a lot of pink prints going through, which on my platform means people are, are selling below the bid, actually. Um, there was a lot of panic selling going on. And luckily at that point, I was down to, I think, 5,000 shares, something like that. And I was actually waiting for a bounce, uh, which we got here. Uh, once it got down to 23 cents or so, we got a sweet bounce. Um, I did bought this actually, not at Interactive Brokers, but I did dip buy it at Schwab. And I got, I think, a 24 cent average, which I'm still holding uh, into tomorrow. Anyways, you you see uh, you see you get the bounce here, and then I ended up taking off the rest here because again on level two it was clear it was turning. Um, the ask started to stack. There were a lot of big sellers, and pink prints started coming through again. So it's kind of cool. The OTCs are nice that way. Uh, pretty clean trends, and the panics are very clean. The bounces are clean. The other thing that tipped me off to this bounce was the just the enormous green candle bar on the one minute volume. Um, I believe that's the most volume it did all day in one minute was on this bounce. So once we got down 24, 23 cents, there was the bid start stacking up in a major way. And then you started seeing these dark green prints going through, meaning people are jumping the ass to buy. So, so very clean, very nice. Uh, pretty stress-free trade and you just have to watch the watch the level two you know on these OTCs as much as you can and when there's when there's volume like this uh, it's very clean and it can be it can be uh, it's a good skill I think to have to be able to identify the tops and bottoms in terms of level two on OTC stocks anyways we'll get uh, let's see so you'll see what happened here. We had this low, set a higher low. Um, this is the low I bought. And one more note on dip buying panics in an OTC especially is I think it's quite important to get in kind of towards the bottom of these things. That's why I'm pretty quick to pull the trigger once I see that bid stack and I'm pretty quick to pull the trigger once I see the ass stack when I'm trying to sell. Um, if you're too late on this guy, you know, say you put a market order in, which you shouldn't, but if you, you're panicking out, I mean, you may not get filled. You could put in a market order at 32 cents, but if there's a panic like this in an OTC, you may get filled down at 30 cents or 29 cents. I've had that happen to me and it's really a pain in the ass and the slippage can be bad. So you have to be pretty quick on your feet, um, buying bounces and with your shares as well identify key levels of support and resistance and be ready at those at those levels with a plan for what you want to do um i think that's that's the whole key to a move like this and being able to buy early uh, sell into strength and buy weakness and sell into strength again i mean it's very it's very straightforward um but you can see we set a higher low and then just trended up nicely all day kind of tried to test that high and got stuffed um, but set another higher low and grinded in the close and closed right at its highs so I'm expecting for tomorrow um, I think I am carrying not too many I think another 40,000 shares at Schwab from around 24 cents uh, into tomorrow and 
and I'll sell into strength in the morning. Um, this is a really classic pattern here. If any of you know Tim Sykes or watch him or learned from him, uh, he calls it his number five pattern and that's in penny stocking framework. It's a great DVD. Um, but you get a parabolic, you get a pullback, and this is the first green day. And if you see, and it's a, it's a fairly high odds pattern. Um, since it finished at its highs, along with a lot of other Bitcoin stocks today, I am expecting a gap up and maybe a spike to, I don't know, 37, 36, 37, something like that. Maybe 40 cents, who knows? Um, but I will most likely be selling into whatever spike or gap up we get in the morning. Only because if you look at the history of this stock, you can see these other times it went parabolic from 2 to 20, uh, from 6 to 16. Uh, you get the spike, a couple days of pull, and then you get the first green day, usually followed by a spike in the morning, and then it, that's usually the end of it for the most part. Uh, same on this one. Pull back, green day, and then a little spike, but it gets stuffed, so... Not expecting too much out of it, but I am expecting some sort of spike in the morning or gap up. And that's kind of how I go about planning uh, with OTC stocks in particular. But this was a good one today. I liked it. Um, you got you got to play a morning spike on an OTC. Uh, really clean trend. There was a couple great dip buy opportunities. You could have bought this dip, uh, the initial dip like I did. Or you could have bought this second dip when it set a higher low so that's all i got today pretty quick one but i figured i'd just go ahead and put one out for you guys um when i have a little bit more time i'll get working on that dpw trade because it should be pretty entertaining uh to go through that footage but but that's it have a good one guys if you guys need anything else shoot me a comment uh, i'll try i know there's been a lot of requests for a lot of different kinds of videos so I'll try to get to watch list making, um, scanners, all that good stuff here in the near future. Anyways, that's it. Have a good one, guys. Hey, Tim Sykes, millionaire mentor and trader. Thank you for watching my videos. I hope that they help you. I wanna share everything that I've learned over the years. You can check out more videos right over there and also click subscribe so that you can watch all of these videos, get that knowledge and become my next millionaire student.